Hi, I'm Chad with Move for Guitar. This lesson is from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to harmonize a major scale with drop two and drop three chords. First off, if you like the diagrams for everything in this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, Music Theory for Guitar. And this e-guide will be something that you can study and use as a reference for years to come. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to just go download it. But I am working on it as I'm filming this lesson, so if it's available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. If no link appears, you can look in the description and it will say whether it's available or coming soon. And if it's not available yet, you can sign up for our mailing list and we'll send you a copy as soon as it is available. Also, if you're signed up for our mailing list, you'll receive all updated versions as well. But don't worry, you don't need the e-guide to follow along with this lesson because all of the charts will be on the screen. And also be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day. This is part 3.10 from our series, Music Theory for Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So in the last lesson, I showed you the theory behind harmonizing the major scale with seventh chords. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a practical way to harmonize the major scale with drop chords. So that is something you can actually practice and use and start using right away. So you're going to be able to play these chord shapes up and down your fretboard and harmonize the major scale with them. And we're going to do it with drop two and drop three chords since that's what we've been talking about. And they're probably the most common and most useful way to play seventh chords. So you remember from last lesson that if you harmonize the major scale with seventh chords, you get major seven for the one chord, minor seven for the two chord, minor seven for the three, major seven for the four, dominant seven for the five, minor seven for the sixth, and minor seven flat five for the seven. So now we're going to look at this on the fretboard and we're going to do it in the key of G just because it falls in a nice place on the fretboard and it's easier to visualize moving up horizontally without having to double back. But this concept obviously applies for all the keys. And so we're going to do the exact same thing we did when we harmonize a major scale with triads. It's just we're going to do them with drop two and drop three chords. So we're going to start with drop two chords and it's obviously in the key of G and if you look at this fretboard you'll be able to see that a drop to G major seventh in root position starts right here on the root note and ends up with this shape. So that shape right there is a drop to G major seventh in root position. And all we're going to do is play this and then each note is going to move up to the next closest note in the scale. And when we do that, we end up harmonizing the major scale. And since we're starting in root position, the lowest note of the new chord becomes our new root and all the other intervals match up to this new root. And once we do that all the way up the fretboard, we've harmonized the major scale with drop two chords. So here's the drop two major seventh chord in root position and we're in G. So that's a G major seven chord. Now all we do is move each note up to the next closest note in the scale. And once we do that, we end up with a drop two minor seven chord in root position. So all the new intervals, just like we did with the triads, correspond to this new root. And you'll remember that the two chord in the major scale, when you build it with seventh, is a minor seventh chord. So that's why you end up with a minor seventh chord. And if you do it again, it's another minor seventh chord. That's a three chord. Do it again. The four chord is a major seventh chord. Do it again. The five chord is a dominant seventh chord. That's what you end up with, this shape. Do it again. The next chord, which is a six chord, is the, another minor seventh chord. Do it again. The seventh chord is your minor seven flat five, which gives you this shape. Do it one more time. You're back at the first chord we started with an octave higher, which is a major seventh chord. And this was obviously on the sixth, fifth, fourth, and third string, but you could do it on any of the string sets and do the exact same thing. Just start in root position, which if you're in the key of G, you would start on with G as your lowest note and you would play with major seventh and just move up to the next closest note in the scale. And that's how you would harmonize it. 
or really all you have to think about instead of thinking about each note moving up to the next closest note which can be hard to think about quickly is just think about your first chord is a major seventh chord which you should know this shape and then your next chord is a minor seventh chord which means that you just move the three and the seven back half a step to get your minor seven chord shape your three chord is a minor seventh chord so it stays the same shape your fourth chord is a major seventh chord so you move the three and the seven up back half a step your five chord is a dominant seven so you move the seventh back half a step that's your new shape your sixth chord is a minor seven so then you move your third back half a step because going from a dominant seven to a minor seven the only difference is that you have to move the, mi the major third down to a minor third to get to a minor seventh from a dominant seventh then you go up to the next chord your sixth chord is a minor seven flat five which means that you move the fifth back half a step and you end up with that shape then you're going back to the one which is major seven so you have to move the three the five and the seven up half a step to get back to a major seventh chord and then obviously all you have to focus on is the shape that's coming up to just transition to the new shape and that your lowest note is your root note and you just move in the order of the major scale so whole step whole step half step and so on and just bring those shapes along with you so that's how to do it with drop two it's the exact same thing with drop three so for in G again we would have a drop three shape that would be right here so that's your drop three shape then you just move every note up to the next closest note in the scale and that's how you would harmonize it so if we start in root position with the major seventh it's that shape that you learned move all the notes up to the next closest notes in the scale you end up with a minor seventh and so on so all you have to really think about is starting with major seven you know your next chord is minor seven so you know that shape the next chord is minor seven you know that again it's just the same shape your next chord is major seven again so you move to the major seven shape your next chord is dominant seven so you move to the dominant seventh chord shape your next chord is minor seven so you move to the minor seven shape your next chord is minor seven flat five so you move to that shape then you're back at major seventh one octave higher which is your one chord so one chord is major seven two chord is minor seven three chord is minor seven four chord is major seventh five chord is dominant seventh six chord is minor seventh seventh chord is minor seven flat five then you're back at the one an octave higher and again you just have to think about going from your one chord to your two chord is going from a major seven to a minor seven so when you do that you just have to move your three and your seven back half a step which gives you this shape your next chord is minor seven again so it stays the same and so on just like we did with the drop two chord and again those work through all the string sets I'm just showing you starting with a six string root and then again you can do the exact same thing with all the inversions so this is first inversion of the G major scale so you have your third as the lowest note instead of your root so then you just do the exact same thing move each note up to the next closest note in the scale and then you would get minor seven minor seven major seven dominant seventh minor seven and then I've just doubled back because I ran out of room because I kept this in the key of G so minor seven flat five back to major seven so then what you have to think about is your major scale moving along this string if we started with the six string as our lowest note your major scale is moving along this string and that's where your root follows so you go whole step whole step half step and so on along this string and then all the other notes you just adjust to the new chord so you're starting with major seven which you know is a root major third perfect fifth major seventh so when you go to the next chord this root is going to go up a whole step because that's following the major scale and then your third goes back half a step and your seventh goes back half a step because you're going to a minor seven chord and you'd end up with this shape which you could see would be the same shape as what you started with if your three and your seven were up half a step each which would be this and again you can do them with drop two or drop three and on all the string sets I just showed you starting with the sixth string as your lowest note 
So that's how to harmonize a major scale with drop two and drop three chords. I recommend practicing these shapes and practice practicing harmonizing the major scale with the drop two and drop three chords because it'll come in really handy to you because if you play seventh chords these are the probably the most common way to play them and if you're able to harmonize the major scale with them you'll be able to see all the different chord types up and down the scale diatonic to the major scale and then do it in root position but also do it with the inversions as well because that's going to allow you to play up and down the fretboard as well so go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to talk about chord progressions using seventh chords and be sure to download the e-guide to use that as a reference. All these charts are in there and be sure to subscribe because we add at least one new lesson every day.